Hello there everyone, it's Tanya Gabrielle here, Wealth Astrumerologist. Welcome to Star Codes. This is the podcast where we look at an upcoming event in the astrology and numerology. And in this case, it's the really gorgeous, powerful Pisces full moon with the moon conjunct Neptune, meaning it's merged with Neptune and Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. So this is very exciting news and there's a lot to cover today because Pisces is the ruler of the age, the Piscean age for the last 2000 years that we are moving from. So it's very important when this sign shows up in a big way to understand the dynamics. And in this case, we're also going to look at Virgo because the sun is opposite the moon as it happens in every full moon and will be in Virgo. Now the degree will be 17 degrees. 17 is the immortality number in numerology and it really indicates that some very significant events are going to come to pass in your life and in world events in the month following the full moon and around the full moon especially. So the full moon takes place at 10.59 a.m. on September 10th and that's universal time. That'll be 5.59 a.m. Eastern Time New York and 2.59 a.m. Pacific Time in LA. And of course the moon will be in Pisces, sign of endings, it's the final sign embracing that we are all one, letting go, forgiveness, unconditional love, compassion. And of course, you don't need to be a Pisces or a Virgo to benefit from this reading because you have this full moon somewhere in your astrology birth chart. So we all benefit whenever an important moment in astrology occurs. So Pisces is very artistic, very imaginative, intuitive, and connected to music as well. It's the dreamer, it's about we are all one, merging everything into source. And because it is the final sign, it indicates a bridging into another life, another reality. So it indicates the death of something and the birth, the rebirth of new energy. There are no boundaries with Pisces. It's the most watery of water signs being ruled by Neptune, which governs the oceans. And so the oceans are expansive and water is the one element that can reach everywhere. So your creative imagination reaches everywhere. It seeks to be expressed and it feels limitless. And you are just sensing that you want to explore new dimensions and connect directly with source. Again, we are all one. We come from the same source. So you want to trust in that connection. You want to surrender to it. You want to appreciate what shows up, whatever it is, and embrace it. Now, the date, 10th of September in 2022, that date is important as well because it adds up to 16. It'll be a 16 universal date. And 16 is the number of inspiration. And it figures in greatly because Pisces tunes into that quality, but also there is going to be a trine from the sun to Uranus and from the moon, there'll be a sextile to Uranus. So there's a wonderful triangle, which you can see here between Uranus and the moon and the sun. And Uranus is also about inspiration. It is about breaking free from the old and discovering something that's brand new. And 16.7 brings that surprising element that Uranus brings. So be prepared for some unexpected changes and the way to navigate them is always with your heart, with your intuition. You will always receive what you need. Guidance will come through in any given moment. Now the 10th of September is the instant manifestation number of love and light. And that also is important as you'll see in a moment because the the love, the unconditional love and compassion that Pisces represents is going to be activated 
within you in terms of you acknowledging who you are and seeing that that is the key to feeling connected in a loving way and feeling loved in general. Now Virgo, where the sun is at 17 degrees, Virgo likes to discover, to research, to be meticulous. Virgo governs your daily life. So what you do on a day-to-day basis, it governs healing and health. It governs the bounty of earth, the crystals. And Virgo likes to have control. It can sometimes be perfectionistic. So be aware of that or micromanage. Pisces sees the grander scheme of things. So it, it, it has like this unlimited vision and sense of surrender. Whereas Virgo likes to go in and sometimes even meddle because it is so invested in getting it right and finding the truth of whatever it is. So there's a sense of musicality as well. There's a sense of with Pisces living in harmony and with Virgo being uh, connected to healing and health and a sense of peace is very important in all of this. Pisces, the watery sign, is the floating in the river, the surrendering to the current, never resisting what is natural. And current, when you don't resist the current, you are in the here and now. You are connected to source and you're allowing yourself to flow. So being present, current, means being in the flow. There's also a sense of patience with Pisces. Uh, Pisces just allows time and events to unfold, whereas Uranus is more of a, I want to get things done now planet. And so this trying, this triangle to Uranus does push the energy forward. It does bring those unexpected situations, but then Pisces allows you to step back and breathe. So let's look more closely at Pisces in terms of it governs the hidden, it governs secrets, it governs what is unseen, and so it governs psychic abilities, intuitive abilities, the unconscious, psychology, and in the physical realm, it governs prisons and hospitals, what you don't see, what happens behind closed doors. And the shadow side of Pisces is connected to being in a daze, in a haze, which can come through addiction, through drugs. And so there is a sense of separation in the shadow side expression of Pisces that brings illusion that you are not naturally able to heal yourself, for example, or that you are helpless. So the victimization side of Pisces is part of the shadow side. So we need to be extra vigilant to manifest the positive expression of Pisces and Virgo. And that requires being really present in your heart, in your intuition. So to to be inspired, to be uh, compassionate as well so you're not in a judgment. Because as soon as you go into judgment, you're in your mind and you lose the connection to your heart. You want to go to a place where you're looking at how do I feel honored? How do I feel heard? And especially with this Pisces energy. So you're giving that energy back to yourself. You're not escaping it, ignoring it, right? Stopping it. <laughs> you are basically exploring how do I need to give all of those things to myself? Virgo and Pisces are very connected to giving because Virgo is a sign of service, being of service. And by honoring yourself and by acknowledging yourself, you are serving your highest good. Because then when you acknowledge when you are being courageous, let's just say you did something that you usually don't do, when you speak up for yourself, you acknowledge that you basically are allowing that expression to be acknowledged by others in you and it feeds on itself. So maybe you express to somebody how you truly felt about something and it's new to you and you did it in a very compassionate way. You did not judge the person or make them feel bad about something they did. Previously, you may have been very passive, not spoken up or even sneaky, like approached it from a very um, 
sort of behind the scenes kind of angle and never addressed it head on in a compassionate way, of course. And so now you chose to step into your power and you clearly expressed it compassionately and not making the person feel guilty about it. And this was a new approach. It's really important to acknowledge and celebrate what you did because that celebration and acknowledgement is you reinforcing the energy and you saying, hey, I like this, right? So it's it may seem like a small thing. You know, Virgo is about small things. <laughs> Virgo is your daily life. So, you know, it's, it's very important to acknowledge those small, uh, wonderful, uh, self-growth, amazing moments that you're consistently making, course correcting throughout the day. So acknowledging actions and emotions and thoughts that you're expressing is going to deepen your compassion towards yourself and towards others. And it always begins here first. So you see it reflected in the outside world with people once you acknowledge it here, right? You love and appreciate how you've just accomplished something that in a new way and you celebrate that. And then, hey, lo and behold, uh, it's celebrated by people and reflected back to you. And when you do that, you're going to experience the miracle of your relationships are going to change because you're going to see people as a reflection of yourself and that this reflection that you have of others is your perception of yourself. So anytime you see yourself in others, you realize, oh, that's how I perceive me and you stop judging them. So in this case, if you feel your own inner worthiness and inner love and deservedness, you acknowledge that compassion within you, then you're sending a signal to the world and to others that creates an energy exchange that you want to engage in. I like this feeling. I want to engage in more of it. And this is the trying to Uranus from the sun and the sextile to Uranus from the moon is that signal, sending the signal of this is what I want now for myself. This is my future, right? Uranus rules the future. So it will happen that way. The other thing about Pisces is it dissolves and the moon in Pisces is emotional stuff just flows and you can easily let it go. And one of the biggest emotions to dissolve with Pisces is, and the full moon, is anger. Anger can really be hard on your physical body, your heart center, your mind, it zaps you of a lot of energy and it disrupts the connection, the conscious connection to source. Of course, your connection to source is never stopped, but being conscious of it is really the key. So anger can do that. And Pisces is all about forgiveness, forgiving others. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to walk up to somebody and say that you forgive them. It basically is you acknowledging them as a spark of the divine. You are connected now to acknowledging that spark of divine in you. And so it's natural to see that spark in others. And then you have compassion for them. Then you realize that whatever that moment was that you were angry about or have held the anger for a while, that that other person was only capable of responding in the way they did at that time. If they could have responded differently, they, they most likely would have. And the most important thing, you gained something from that experience because you learned to recognize something that is serving you now. It's like a contrast, right? The actual contrast that was created in that moment that precipitated the anger within you was made clear. And you realized that you also have this inner work to do. So basically Virgo and Pisces, they help you see that you can be of service in every experience that you have in your daily life. And as soon as you see that, you've stepped back into your power. You're no longer a victim, which is the shadow side of Pisces. Forgiveness becomes easy, and that includes forgiving yourself for all the times you may not have stepped up in the way that you feel was the highest way of 
addressing a situation. So remember too, there are always these old programs that are running in all of us that can make us defensive, that can make us aggressive, and that can make us impatient. And so it's very important to always forgive yourself for not being present in the way that you'd like to be. And the thing is that acknowledgement turns into a lesson. The acknowledgement itself turns into a growth experience. You clearly see that was what I needed to learn and now I can see that and it's because I experienced the contrast of what I don't want, which is by the way, symbolized by the opposition. We need contrast, light and dark to see what we want and what we don't want. And now I have a new opportunity in this moment to move forward and embody that new frequency and to try it again and get better at it. So that's another key theme with Virgo. Virgo is very meticulous. Virgo practices things and you can't master anything without practicing. Just like a musician practices not once, but over and over again, right? If you're a concert violinist, for example, you need to practice and then you get more and more into the subtleties of things. And in the same way, we need to practice learning about our thoughts and our emotions and their impact and grounding whatever we find into physical life, putting it into practice. So the more you practice, the more you become aware of all the subtleties. For example, you it throughout the practice, you realize the differences between different frequencies. Uh, you then adjust, you make changes, you don't hang on to the past. You always remember the past is over with you can't change it, it's done, but you can change the future and you can embody that new frequency now. And that again is that trine and sextile to Uranus. The planet of change in the future is Uranus. It's pointing this out exactly in this full moon. Pisces is a dreamy sign, it's watery. So, and and the sun in Virgo is about healing. So there's a sense of balance with the full moon of bringing your energy into equilibrium and with the Pisces impact, it's very important to be near water or drink more water or allow tears to flow, to listen to water through a fountain, uh, whatever the case, or, or beautiful music that that is very watery like Debussy and Ravel. And so a lot of pain and trauma that you may be experiencing as the world shifts, right, is simply generated from this lack of feeling, of of loving, of being compassionate. And so if you can't forgive yourself and love yourself, there's no way you're going to forgive and love others. So it really begins at home and know that others are always a mirror to you. So you're going to project your limiting beliefs onto someone else until you see oh my gosh, you know, what I'm projecting is literally what I need to see in myself, right? It's, it's just always this energy exchange that leads back to you, right? It doesn't lead to them. They have their own discovery, self-discovery to, to, to experience. So take this time during the full moon in Pisces to always return to love, always return here. Most of what's going on with humanity at this time is that lack of connection to the heart. It's a lack of self-love and the clear message is right now that it can be changed. Everything can be healed and that's exactly what you're doing. So loving yourself is really enhanced too when you know what your personal code that you were born with, your birthday, and your astrology chart, what inspiring messages about you is revealed in that code. And your astronomology birth code, that's your star code. That's the stars, the light connect you back to, st- to source. And so this whole birth promise that's revealed in your birth blueprint is truly about that reconnection. It's recognizing who you are at soul level. And I've created a free masterclass at starcodeclass.com. It's complimentary. It includes a handout. It's 
lots of fun. All you need is to set aside about an hour and a half and it's designed to help you live that life that you have in the most fulfilling, happy way. So go and discover your own star code at starcodeclass.com. Enjoy who you are, discover who you are, and bask in that beauty of your soul code because it will always bring you back to source. And what we do in this class is not only look at the positive, we look at the shadow side too, so you're aware of your tendencies and how you can overcome them. So enjoy that class at starcodeclass.com. Have a beautiful, wonderful, healing, uplifting, cleansing, Pisces, full moon, and I will see you in next week's Star Codes podcast. Lots of love.